Thanks for coming back. It's Eric back in the naturopath from New Zealand. We're doing a series on autoimmune disease. Make sure you watch these videos. There's a few of them in this series. We can talk about the causes or what I believe are the likely causes of autoimmune disease because according to medicine, there is no known cause or no likely cause. But there's an increasingly growing consensus that it could be a bacterial or viral problem. So if you think about our bodies, there are billions of bacteria in our bodies and we have to keep our bodies of course you know in good condition and our immune system does a marvelous job of doing that but occasionally like anything it's going to go crazy and it's going to attack what it shouldn't be attacking but if you think about it logically if you keep your digestive system in great shape improve the gut so there's no leakiness there okay so you're not going to get bacterial translocation from the intestine through to the circulatory system you've got a less chance of developing antibodies. I believe where I'm sitting that many, not all, but many cases of autoimmune disease come from faulty eating, faulty lifestyle, uh, and people, for example, that I know eat lots of white bread with jam every day for breakfast, they'll have a cup of, cup of tea or coffee with two or three spoons of white sugar in there, then they'll have some donuts around 11 o'clock. So when you're feeding your gut basically crap like that day in, day out, you're developing a really crappy network you're developing a really crappy microbiome. You're allowing the gut to become more permeable, more, more weak, more sick. And of course, this is a great breeding ground for autoimmunity. So in years to come, doctors will understand this principle that it all boils down to keeping the microbiome in top, top shape. By eating the right kind of food, and living the right kind of lifestyle, simple but not so simple often to put into practice but this in my opinion is the majority of causes of these common autoimmune diseases it's bacterial translocation <clears throat> i've got this interesting book here and i've got many other books i can show you like this treatment in general practice in fact i've got a feeling this came out of one of the garbage bins that i was emptying when i was a dump when i used to tip bins and i tipped the bin for a doctor once i think an old doctor who passed away and there was all these medical books in it so of course i found some and this is a beauty this one this one's from 1936. now i've got the chapter open on rheumatoid arthritis here and it says here achlorhydria is present in 20 percent of cases so that's no stomach acid basically and in such cases, a chronic intestinal infection is highly likely. An infected gallbladder is probably more common than is usually realized. Removal of bile through the duodenal, duodenal tube may show that the gallbladder is a carrier of streptococci bacteria, though the patient has no definitive symptoms. It may be necessary to remove a number of diseased teeth. This should be done gradually to avoid a risk of violent reaction in the joints. Isn't that amazing? There's actually another uh, section here also on another condition, fibrositis, which today we call fibromyalgia, I believe. Uh, and here also it talks about a large group of cases can be traced to the presence of focal infection. Both teeth and tonsils are generally highly suspect. So if you speak with your dentist, you'll be actually quite shocked at how many uh, cases uh, the dentist will report to you of people with autoimmune disease with very bad teeth, okay? Uh, in a poor, a poor it, it goes on to talk about here again, the focus of infection which is often overlooked. So doctors in those days, in the 30s, they knew medicine. They knew medicine very well, just like they know medicine today, okay? They've seen thousands of patients, but in those days, they didn't have big pharma on their back. They didn't have huge, big, establishments controlling how they worked to the degree where everything is like ainly scrutinized now so doctors worked a lot more by empirical observation meaning they didn't have large databases or computer knowledge to throw around the globe there was no internet no computers there was nothing back then there was just pen and paper basically and meetings you know where doctors would go to conferences and meetings like we do today and they would discuss things and this is how people learned information Okay, through empirical observation, through observing, observing, observing. I've observed cases for over 30 years. I've seen a massive connection between poor gut function and autoimmunity. And it's about blooming time the medical establishment sat back and took note of what they also likely know to be uh, you know, the cause of many of these cases, a dysfunctional gut, a dysfunctional lifestyle. 
all this ocean of drugs that we're making and prescribing to people, in my opinion, it's generally needless if the causes are addressed properly. The faulty diet, the faulty gut, and the faulty lifestyle. If these things are fixed up early in the piece, it could save an incredible amount of misery and also a huge amount of cost over time. But a bacteria the only cause? Not really. Yeasts are implicated in many cases of autoimmunity. You can actually do a Google search and find out how candida is implicated in autoimmunity. Bacteria, though, tend to lead the pack. But viruses also have been implicated. There's Gullian bar, for example, uh, Coxsackie virus. There are many sort of viruses uh, that are involved with autoimmunity. And remember also, it's the chemicals, it's the plastics, it's the sprays, it's the poisons. It could also be Monsanto's glyphosate. So the less chemicals you use in the house, the more likely you know, uh, you're going to stay healthier for a longer period of time than increasing the amount of chemicals that you use. So if we reiterate, look back, hormones can play a role, but we're not quite sure. Genetics are likely uh, a part of the cause. But experts say it's genetic plus environmental, usually conjoined, that causes the big problem. So chemicals, poor bacteria, poor diets. And there's one thing that we forgot to talk about, and that's high stress. I just read an interesting study showing that most people with serious autoimmune disease have got very high cortisol levels. So they're highly stressed out people. So you can put 10 people in a room and expose them all to the same stress. Each person will react differently. One person will have serious post-traumatic stress disorder from that event. Another one will walk away and then happily go and have a hamburger and fall asleep later and have no problem with it. So no two people react to the same stressor. But we all tend to react the same towards diets. And that's why it's important to keep the diet in top shape all the time, as much as you can. And do a regular stool test to keep that gut in tip-top shape so you prevent things like bowel disease happening which lead you to autoimmune disease remember you don't just wake up one day and have autoimmune disease it's like anything else in your life it happens slowly slowly over a period of time and then all of a sudden it bites you in the butt but you knew something was wrong but you didn't do anything about it and that's why it's important to address the causes well well before you start looking at the treatments right I hope this gives you better useful information Hang in there, we're going to talk further about autoimmune disease. We can talk about the symptoms. Stay tuned.